Hey guys, April Melvin here, and today we are talking about goals, goals particularly that involve our Christian faith. So if you've set a resolution about you wanna grow your faith or have a stronger faith in 2022, but you're not sure what to do, then this is the video for you. But before I get into the main part of that video, I wanna take just a quick sec and ask that you guys please like and subscribe to my channel. I put out new content twice a week on Thursdays and on Tuesdays, and they are all faith-based. So if you are looking for a bold and yet balanced and always biblical look at our modern world, then go go ahead and hit that subscribe button and don't forget to ring that bell. Now, I am a huge goal person. I love setting goals. I love tracking goals. I love the action steps that go with them. And so I am super excited to talk about this because you can, and I know that's crazy to think about, but you can have a goal regarding your faith. In fact, I know so many people at the beginning of a year, like we just experienced a month ago, that start out with a resolution like, I want to have a strong stronger faith in 2022. And that is something that they've wanted. That's something that they're driving for, but they don't know how to get there. And so today I want to dissect that. I want to look at why having a resolution like that is an issue and how can we tweak it so that we can actually get some traction so that we can actually check that box for 2022. So why is having a resolution, like I want to have a stronger faith, why is that not a good resolution to have? Well, there's three reasons and they all kind of dwell around this idea that it's just not specific enough. When you have have a goal, like I want to have a stronger faith that doesn't tell you what you want. It doesn't tell you what that looks like. And so because it's not specific enough, you don't know where to go. You don't know what to aim for. And even if you did know where you wanted to go, and even if you did know what you wanted to aim for, you really don't know when you've gotten there. Because again, you don't have any specifics regarding that goal. That's more of an idea. I have this idea that I want to have a stronger faith. And that's great. Start there, but now we're going to have to add some specifics to it so that we can really put some actionable steps to it so we can actually start moving to get to this idea that we want. So having the resolution, I want to have a stronger faith, that's a great starting point. But if that's all you have, you don't have enough information in order to really create a plan to get there in 2022. So we're going to look at what would happen if we tweaked it a little bit and actually gave it a plan. All right, so if your goal is to have a stronger faith in 2022, the very first step, the first thing that you need to do is you need to assess where you're at. Guys, think of a goal as a journey. You can't map out how to get to the end goal if you don't first know where you're at. So self-reflection is key, and this is the thing that I see a lot of people fail on. They just jump right in to try to get to where they wanna go, but you can't get to where you wanna go if you don't know where you're at. So always start out with self-reflection. If you have not done that yet this year, set aside 20 to 30 minutes, get a piece of paper and start analyzing where you're at with your Christian faith. Three things that you're going to look at first, because I believe very strongly that these are three things that all Christians should consistently be doing. The first one is, are you reading your Bible daily? You guys, this needs to be a daily habit for every single Christian. Now hear me. I don't mean that this needs to be a 30 or 40 minute long event, but five, 10 minutes every day. The word of God is our daily bread. It is something that we should be consuming on an ongoing basis. So if you're using the word of God like a pain pill and you don't read it every single day, that's a great, that is a great goal for 2022. This is why self-reflection is so important. So if you have this idea, you want a stronger faith and you aren't reading the Bible consistently, start with that one. And that one's a much easier. Can you see the difference? Having a stronger faith, hard to know what that looks like, but wanting to read the Bible on a consistent basis every single day, that's something that we can actually track and we can actually move towards in 2022. Are you reading the Bible consistently? If you are, then go to the second one. Are you praying consistently? Again, prayer is that relationship with God. That's what God is seeking from us. So are you doing that? Are you praying? Is is prayer plan A in your life as a believer? Or is it plan C or D? Or sometimes I feel like prayer is plan X, right? It's so far down the way. So if if prayer isn't your go-to move as a believer, if it's something that you are not engaging on on a daily consistent basis, if you're not entering in that throne room to develop and deepen and strengthen that relationship with God, that's something that you can work on in 2022, right? Again, self-reflection matters. Having a consistent prayer walk, that is something that we can 
easily work towards in 2022. If you're checking the, the word of God and the prayer box, the third one is, are you in a church? You guys, I have so many videos about this, but having a church, being a part of a church body is so important. So again, if you aren't in a church, that's a fantastic goal for 2022. Finding a church and becoming grafted in in 2022. That's something actionable. That's something attainable. Now, beyond that, if you have all three of those, move to other areas. Look at where your Christian walk is at. How's your relationship with your spouse? How's your relationship with your kids? How's work going? Is there any areas of your life where you're feeling angst? If you're feeling unconfident, is it like every a sore tooth, right? Every time you poke at it, is there an area that every time you poke at it, you just get anxious or upset or frustrated. Those are great areas. That's a great indication that they need some attention. And so this self-reflection step is so critical, guys. Before you can craft what your goal is, you have to know what about your situation you'd like to change. So start with that, start with some self-reflection and see where it goes. All right, the second thing you're gonna do after you've done your self-reflection is you're going to craft it in such a way that it is quantifiable. We've got to know what it looks like. Again, specific here get specific. Going back to this idea of having a church, that's quantifiable. We know what that looks like. At the end of 2022, our goal is that we are grafted in and we are part of a church body. So that's something that we can easily watch, manage, track. Reading the Bible consistently, same thing, right? We've got this, we've got this baseline. Here's what we want. We want to have this, this habit of daily reading the word, right? We can quantify it. Guys, I cannot tell you how important this step is. Again, if you start with this resolution of I want a deeper faith, it is not specific enough for you to actually track it and know if you are moving forward in that area. So if you're looking in 2022, you want to make sure that that goal has some quantifiable element to it. Is it a daily habit that you are just tracking consistently? Or is it a longer term thing like joining a church that you can break down into manageable, actionable steps? So make sure that it's quantifiable now that you've taken a moment and reflected of what you would like to, to change about your faith. Make sure that that thing that you're wanting to change, you can add a quantity to it. All right, the third thing we're going to do is we're going to check and make sure that it's realistic. Guys, again, this is where people fail. They have this, this big idea that they really want to shoot for and maybe it is quantifiable but if it's not realistic to their lifestyle if it's not realistic to their schedule then they're just setting themselves up for failure so a great example would be if you know your goal is to read the word of god more fantastic a plus i am behind that 100 but if you're if the quantity that you're wanting to do every day if it's to spend two hours reading the word of god every day that may not be realistic for you right now in the season of life that you're in and i'm going to be really honest with you it's not realistic for me even adding another hour or 30 minutes to my very busy schedule would be very challenging and so if you've got something this goal and you have it and it's completely beyond what you can reasonably expect to accomplish in a particular set of time period, then you're just setting your setup up for failure. So make sure that as you are looking at your goal, that it really truly is realistic. Don't just make a goal for the sake of making a goal. It's got to be a goal that you can obtain and that is going to make a meaningful impact on your life. If it's a goal that is just out there, if it's a goal that just sounds really good, then chances are you're going to get demotivated. You're not going to be able to accomplish it and you're just going to end up getting frustrated with yourself. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to give it a time frame. Guys, you need to make sure that you know and have an idea of when you want to accomplish this. If reading the Bible on a consistent basis is something that you want to accomplish in the next three months, that's fine. But make sure there's a time and a date on that. Guys, a body at rest will remain at rest. So you've got to give it some motivation to get moving and a great motivator is a timeline, is some deadline that you're aiming towards. So as you're crafting this, give it a specific deadline that you're aiming towards. Now, keep in mind, if you don't meet that deadline, that's okay. It isn't about an all or nothing mentality. Sometimes life happens and you've got to push that deadline out, but giving yourself a deadline and then giving your permission to be flexible about that. Guys, it's so important to get the momentum going so that you can get moving on this goal. The other thing that this timeline does is that it gives you an opportunity to take this bigger goal and break it down into set action steps. So maybe your goal is to find a church. The first action step would be making a list of the churches within a 10, 15 mile radius. And you can accomplish this by February 15th. 
Okay, so your first action step is that. The second action step is you're gonna visit, you're gonna visit all the websites, right? Or you're gonna do some research on them or you're gonna pull your neighbors. So you guys see, you can take this, this bigger goal of joining a church and you can break it down into manageable action steps and then give each action step a deadline. You're gonna get this action step done by this date and then you're gonna move on to the next one. That makes this big goal something smaller, easier to manage, and it gives you an opportunity to get that motivation with momentum from having a deadline to get it done. Now this last bonus tip, I'm just gonna throw out there and say that everyone's a little bit different here. And so you've gotta find that magic mix that works for you. But for me, in every area of my life, and I have several, I have my, my business, I have personal, family, I have spiritual, right? I have goals for them. But I don't work on all of the goals at one time. So even though I might have in the next five years, 10 business goals that I wanna hit, I'm only working on one at a time. And same thing with your faith. So as you're doing that self-reflection, you might see that there are several areas of your spiritual walk that you would like to change. And that's fabulous. Write it down. That's exciting. But focus on one, start with one. And here's the thing, start with an easy one. I know that sounds counterintuitive, especially if you've got this big one that seems more important, but you guys, it's like snowballing your finances. Start with a small one that you can knock out of the park and then move to the next one and then move to the next one. Again, momentum is important. Momentum continues the movement. So if you can take a small goal, maybe it is reading the Bible consistently, like you're going to, you're going to accomplish this within the next month. And here's how you're going to do it. You get that. You feel good about yourself. You, you know that you can accomplish it, right? It gives you the encouragement. It gives you the drive to do the next one. And so I only would do one at a time. That's just me. You might be a little bit different, but I only work on one at a time in one area of my life. And I would encourage you to start with a small one first and then build up that momentum so that you can knock out the bigger ones. So that's how I would do my goals. I would encourage you guys if having a stronger faith, if that is something that you genuinely desire for in 2022, then go through these steps. Let me know if that's helpful. That's how I do it. All right, guys, so that is my video on goals and how to set goals and how to accomplish them. I hope this was helpful. If it was, give it a like, give it a share. Let me know in the comment section. And then if you guys wanna hang out with me more, check out my Facebook group, Mighty Mamas. There we post daily devotions. We post inspirational memes, great quotes, funny scriptures. What are funny scriptures? <laughs> funny quotes, whatever it is to encourage us and uplift us throughout our day. And then guys come back on Tuesday. I think I'm going to do a rant series on the things that Christians do that are annoying. I think it'll be interesting to do some research on what the world finds annoying about us and then talking about how we can change it and maybe do better next time. So come back for that and I will see you then.